Hello everybody. So today I'm going to be cooking that incredible rainbow trap that I caught uh, over in Stockbridge. Shout out to the Pike family, thank you for inviting me. Um, if you haven't seen the fish, please do check out a previous post and you'll see I actually caught two fish. This is the larger of the two. Um, there's, there's a few different ways to, to actually cook your fish and obviously you can portion it up into individual portions and you can pan fry them, roast them, there's all different options. One of the things that I actually really love to do, and this takes me back to my days of the Savoy, is poach it whole. And we used to have to prep a whole poached salmon or trout every morning when I worked there. And we're going to cook it in exactly the same way. But what we do when we finish is we used to take all the skin off and then very finely... Um, uh, slice cucumbers and we used to put the cucumbers back onto the fish so it almost looked like the scales. I'm not going to do that today because this fish is actually going to be our lunch and some of it I'm going to do another dish with uh, later on today or tomorrow. So this will, this massive uh, rainbow trout will actually produce lots of different um, dishes. Uh, so I'll talk through what I'm going to do now. Obviously I've gutted the trout. Um, very important when you gut it to, to remove the, the blood line. You can see at the back of here that you can see a little bit of it there. This would be completely full of blood. It's very important to get the back of a spoon and, and really scoop all that out because that can sometimes turn the fish off quite quickly. Um, I'm going to season this with some of the blackthorn salt which is my new favourite salt and we're going to just season the inside of the cavity there. I'm not going to uh, season the outside mainly because We've got a cork bouillon going on on the stove there, and that's already seasoned, but we'll talk a bit about that in a second. So, black pepper inside. Um, we've got our tarragon, which is also going to go in there, and slices of lemon. Now, there is lemon juice in the water, but I think the lemon will just give it a nice little sort of flavour on the inside as well. So we're going to press that back, we'll put it back onto its little kind of tray. Um, hopefully that will stay in there, and we're going to head over to the stove, and we'll get it, get it in the cork bouillon. So, if you look at, um, so this is a this is a soup a soup. This is a fish kettle, and um, this is something that we always we've always had in the house. We actually keep things like potatoes and onions and all sorts of things in it. So to actually be able to use it today is actually great fun. Um, so in here, I've got. Onion, garlic, peppercorns, bay, thyme, uh, tarragon, lemon, and vinegar. Now, you can use different types of vinegar. I mean, classically, you'd use white wine vinegar. Um, I've actually used cider vinegar in here because I quite like it. I use a bit of Willie's cider vinegar. And um, the idea is that we're going to submerge the fish into the court bouillon and then put the lid on. It's quite important when you put the fish in that it actually covers the fish. Um, so you might need to top up a little bit after. So uh, yeah, going cooking time. I'm going to start off with 15 minutes, and after 15 minutes, I'm going to lift it out, and I'm going to check it along the back backbone here, because that's where you know if it's going to be a little bit under, it'll be under there. Um, I think 15 minutes should do it, but um, you know if you're going to do this at home, please do check. You know, don't just pull it out, expect it to be ready because it may not be. Now. If it is quite under and you'd like your trout pink, turn the gas off and leave it in there with the lid on for a further five or six minutes. And what that'll do is that'll carry on cooking. You don't want to put it back into the cork bouillon and just keep on boiling it and then leaving it in there after. There's a little bit of sort of play that, that happens. So let's lower this in. Hopefully it doesn't fall off. Whoa. Okay. So gently. Lower that in. Obviously, all the flavour from that incredible cork bouillon, all the onions, all that is still in there. I'm going to top up with a little bit of water. Now, it's quite important um, before you put the fish in that you actually taste your cork bouillon. There's nothing worse than you know going through all of this and then after you know you've you've sort of taken out, you say, oh, it doesn't taste of the vinegar or I can't taste the salt. So. You want to make it quite strong, and then just this little bit of water rattling in shouldn't make too much of a difference. So as you can see now, that's that's covered, and that is already poaching. Do you want to have a little look? Can you see that? Because it's amazing how it quickly changes colour. So that is now beautiful. Now, one trick 
if you don't want to fill it too high up, you can get a J cloth like this or any other non, you know, you could do muslin or, or a normal cloth if you wanted and place that over the top. And what that does is that allows the water to keep on the top of the fish and that will carry on cooking. So I'm going to cover that now and set my timer. I'll be, um, I'll be placing uh, the list of ingredients and all of that on this post as well. So um, yeah, go out, get fishing and um, give it a go. And I'll, I'll post the rest of the dishes soon. Thanks a lot, have a great day.